So this is more or less perfect weather for carnivorous plants? Well, it's a bit like we're in Borneo or somewhere. It's misting all the time yeah. where all these plants grow. Yes, Don? Where these Nepenthes pitcher plants grow, they're always on the fringes of rainforest and they get rain like this virtually every afternoon. Now, I suppose the thing I've got to say is I go around a lot of gardens and over the years, um, I can't remember seeing these in any average person's garden. Yeah, they've only just become, I suppose, more readily available now. I've been growing for about 20 years. Right. But in those days, you always thought that they had to be in a heated glass house. And the only time people ever saw them was on documentaries or yeah. in a heated glass house in botanical gardens. You don't want to give them full sun, but they do like to be kept moist. And most of the plants I grow are in live sphagnum moss. Keep them in sphagnum moss so they've got oh, the moisture okay. there. Now, you can buy that at the local nursery. It's sort of... Um creamy coloured stuff that looks like it's dead but in fact is often alive. Absolutely. And it's very fluffy and very light and you can put that in a pot and grow your carnivorous plants oh, yeah. in that. Because it can hold up to like 10 or a dozen times its own weight in water. Alright, well, what variety are these? Well this is actually a hybrid, this it's one here. It's a hybrid down. between uh, two species, one yep. from the Philippines, one from Borneo. Right. It's uh, Nepenthes ventricosa cross maxima. And the, the, the plant in front here is actually a Nepenthes ventricosa, which is from the Philippines. Oh, so that's one of the parents. That's right. Okay. And, uh, and have we got lots of stuff in there? Oh, yeah. Look, these catch their own things. They Flies, mosquitoes, like this one here, there's a whole heap of, of mosquitoes in there oh, now. Oh, yeah. Well, um, ex-mosquitoes. That's right. And, and because I've got these plants hung up, they're actually going to get just flying insects, basically. But in the orchid house, or in the shade house, I've got plants sitting on benches and they often eat crawling insects like cockroaches and even crickets and those things. And What's the um, biggest thing they've ever caught? I've had them take a mouse. Really? Yeah. A mouse? Um, because my, my dad's breeds German roller canaries and with the birds seen around you get mice ah, there. Yeah. And I got the shock of my life and I, th I actually thought a skink had been caught because you just see a little bit of the tail sticking out. Yeah. And they had a look and, hello, oh, there's a mouse in there. So uh, yeah. they certainly work they, and you don't have to feed them yourself, they do it all themselves. And what about fertilising? Why bother? <laughs> they catch all their own food. That's the idea of it, because they grow in areas which are pretty low in nutrients. And... So, David, you've got a misting system on the roof of this... Of this glass house, yeah. These are for more of the tropical species that we've got growing in here. Uh, these ones in, say, parts, say, for about Townsville sort of thing, North Queensland, you grow these ones outside, but in the lower latitudes, in the areas where you get below about 10 degrees, in wintertime, you do need a heated glass house to grow these through wintertime. Even though through summer, they'd be fine outside, but wintertime, they do need to be in the heat. And, of course, some of these get fairly big Yeah, pitches. well, there's a, there's a really nice plant. This is an Nepenthes truncata. This is one of the awesome species. It's, it's from the Philippines, from Mindanao. And this is one that can eat rats in the wild. <laughs> um, that's eaten birds and all that sort of thing. That's still a baby, that picture there. Uh, that's probably about 12 inches long at present, but they can get up to about 16 inches long and Goodness. hold about two or a bit more litres of water or of liquid. So they can be very, very, very big. They're serious pitcher plants, Don. Don't, don't get too close. <laughs> <laughs> don't do this at home. Yeah, that's right. But I, I suppose the point from all of this is that there are carnivorous plants, particularly these nepenthes, that, that are for the purists, that are for the hobbyists, that where you need your bush house yep. and or glass house, whatever, and irrigation. But there's still a group of them that are a bit easier where people could have a bit of a lash at them. Oh, absolutely. I think it's like all types of plants. There are some that are a little bit harder to get and harder to grow. But there are so many, if you like, common varieties now around now that are very easy to grow. Sure, plants like that nepenthes truncata, they're a bit more specialised. Right. But we're now doing hybrids between these and the really easily to grow species that will give you plants that are just so easy to grow in a range of climates, but also will produce big pitches. Because everyone, when they see a range of them, yeah. they always want the big ones. Everyone wants the biggest. Yeah.